So you've decided to take a quick trip to the inside of a volcano crater. You know, for the vibes. Maybe for the gram. Maybe you're just feeling a little spicy. Or perhaps you've just watched one too many documentaries narrated by that soothing British guy and thought, how bad could it really be? Well, let me answer that for you. You wouldn't survive. Not for five minutes. Heck, you wouldn't even get a chance to dramatically throw a ring into Mount Doom and yell for Frodo before turning into human fondue. But don't worry. That's what I'm here for. To walk you through the lava-splattered, fire-breathing horrors of volcano craters so you don't have to try it yourself. But I saw people hiking up volcanoes in Costa Rica and Bali looked chill. Sure, Becky. You saw people standing near the edge of a dormant volcano's crater with a guide in a helmet while holding their last will and testament. That's like comparing dipping your toe in a hot tub to diving straight into an active deep fryer. So today, we're going to take a delightfully painful dive into why you absolutely, positively, should not under any circumstance tree to survive inside a volcano crater. We'll look at the science behind it, the pure hellish conditions you'd face, and of course, I'll tell you a story about the time I almost got heat stroke standing next to a hot spring and realized, oh yeah, I'm not built for this. So grab your heat-resistant marshmallows, maybe a Kevlar suit, and let's explore this literal hot mess of an idea. Let's start with the basics. A volcano crater is like Mother Earth's open sore. It's a big ol' bowl-shaped cavity at the top of a volcano, usually formed after an eruption blows its top off like someone opening a shaken soda can. You might be thinking it's just a big, empty hole. Spoiler alert, it's not. It's a death trap filled with scalding gases, unstable rock, boiling mud, and enough heat to cook your insides like a rotisserie chicken. Volcano craters come in various flavors of terrible, dormant craters. Quiet, sleepy, and deceptively innocent. Like a cat right before it bites you for no reason. Active craters? These are the bad boys that huff and puff and blow pyroclastic kisses. Avoid. Lava lakes? These exist in some volcanoes, like Erta Ale in Ethiopia or Kilauea in Hawaii. Basically, the Earth's version of a jacuzzi from hell. Now, you might say, hey, can't I just hang out on the edge? You can. You can also hang out on the edge of the skyscraper in a windstorm. Doesn't mean it's smart. Okay, let's talk heat. If you so much as peek over the edge of an active crater, the heat will hit you like a pizza oven door opening in your face But if that oven were the gateway to hell. Temperatures in a volcano crater can range from 500 degrees Celsius to over 1200 degrees Celsius. That's over 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's hot enough to melt aluminum, fry your organs, and turn your phone into a puddle of regret. Let me paint a picture. You step into the crater, all decked out in your hiking boots, adventure hat, and probably some overpriced sunglasses. Within seconds, your shoes, melting. Your sweat, evaporating before it hits your face. Your lungs, screaming, why have you done this? Now, I once visited a geothermal area in Iceland. Harmless, right? There I was, trying to get a selfie with some steaming vents like every other wannabe explorer. Within five minutes, I was drenched in sweat, had a migraine, and was googling how to fake hypothermia to get out of a hike. And that wasn't even inside a crater. That was just the pre-show. Inside a volcano, your body would start failing faster than my New Year's resolutions. Your eyeballs would dry out like raisins. Your skin? Cooked. Your hair? Barbecue. Your internal organs? Baked to perfection. If you were somehow, magically, wearing a heat-resistant suit like the ones volcanologists you should still only buy yourself a few minutes. And that suit costs more than your car. Let's say, against all odds, you survive the heat. Great! You're still going to die. Why? Gases. Volcanoes don't just spew lavave also release toxic gases like sulfur dioxide smells like rotten eggs and burns your lungs. Carbon dioxide odorless, tasteless, and quietly replaces the oxygen you need to not die. Hydrogen sulfide smells like doom and causes instant unconsciousness in high concentrations. These gases form what's known as a dead zone. It's not a fun video game arena adds an actual invisible blanket of suffocation. 
people have died outside volcanoes from these gases. There's a lake in Cameroon Lake Nyas that released a CO2 cloud and suffocated an entire village in their sleep. And that wasn't even a volcano crater. Your body isn't built to filter toxic clouds while you hike around like you're on a wellness retreat. Your lungs would panic, your brain would fog up, and soon, you'd be face down in a pile of volcanic gravel, wondering where it all went wrong. Let's say you're still going. You're not, but for storytelling's sake, the terrain inside a volcano crater is like walking on a brittle croissant made of knives, knives and betrayal. It's unstable. It shifts. It crumbles under pressure. Kind of like me during tax season. The ground is made of volcanic rock porous, sharp, brittle, and full of air pockets. Step wrong, and you could fall into a hidden vent, or worse, crack through a thin crust and plunge into boiling mud. And speaking of mud, let's talk about those fumaroles little steam vents that look cute but are basically steam-powered death geysers. You could be walking peacefully and suddenly whoosh-boiled from the ankles up like a human dumpling. Also, landslides. Crater walls are prone to collapsing. If they go, you're getting buried in hot ash and boulders. Not nope. a cute look. Oh, and let's not forget the psychological trauma. Your brain does not handle extreme environments well. Heat stress causes confusion, hallucinations, panic attacks, and that lovely thing where your brain says, hey, what if you just lay down and accept your fate? Also, your body will be working overtime trying not to die. Heart pounding, lungs gasping, vision blurring, stomach flipping it's like running a marathon while being microwaved. Oh, and dehydration kicks in faster than your ex responding to your texts after you won the lottery you'll be sweating out every ounce of water until your blood thickens like gravy. One time, I stood too close to a bonfire at a beach party. Thought I was being all cool and primal. Two minutes in, my eyes were dry, my mouth felt like a sandpaper sandwich, and I nearly fainted. That was from standing next to a fire. Imagine being inside an actual volcano. Let's say your sheer willpower and bad life choices got you to the bottom of a volcano crater. Now what? You're not getting out. Remember that crumbly terrain we talked about? It's way steeper and slicker on the way up. You're exhausted, probably coughing up blood, and your shoes look like grilled cheese. If you collapse, no one's coming to save you. Helicopters can't just hover over volcanoes. The heat and air pressure mess with flight mechanics. Drones might work if someone even realizes you're in there, which they probably won't, because your last Instagram post was, heading off grid smiling fire. So, let's recap, shall we? Volcano craters are not nature's hot tubs. They are death pits. Temperatures will roast you alive before you can even scream. Toxic gases will choke you out like an invisible UFC fighter. The terrain is unstable, untrustworthy, and designed to murder you. You're so next time you're feeling adventurous, maybe visit a volcano museum, or go to that virtual volcano simulator. Or watch this video again and remind yourself why being alive is better than being a cautionary tale on National Geographic. Stay safe, stay cool, and most importantly, stay out of volcano craters. Like, subscribe, and drop a comment below.